Welcome to the Vinny Rock Podcast. Podcast. I took the blows and did it my way. It's time. The Vinny Rock Podcast. Yiggity, 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 yeah. What up? What up? It's the Vinny Rock Podcast. So it's coming to the end of the year. This is most likely going to drop before Christmas. So I'm going to say happy, happy, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Kwanzaa. Uh, Hanukkah. Uh, Three Kings. All those motherfuckers. Hope you guys are having a good time. Hope you guys are enjoying the break. Uh, first, before I get to my podcast, today I want to talk about some kind of simple. I get questions and I'm just trying to fill uh, my podcast with some of the answers. Make it easier on my fucking life. But uh, before that, we'll get to the sponsors. Do you already know? I always start with them because it's just something I believe in, like all my other sponsors. But Core Medical Group is your place for testosterone replacement therapy. Yes, those of you who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and feeling not so much themselves. If you're fucking lazy ass and you're like, man, I wish I wasn't so lazy. I wasn't always lazy, but I'm fucking lazy now. That's something that would be a concern of mine, and I'd go get my fucking blood work tested. So any of you guys that are listening right now, seriously, go get your blood work checked. Cost you about 100 bucks, 120 bucks, and that could be the answer for all your fucking problems. It can help in your sex life. It can help for your mental, your emotional, your physical, everything you can think of. Yes, testosterone could, could potentially be the answer for all your fucking problems. Go check out Core Medical Group. If you guys don't know how to get a hold of them, I can hit you directly to my guy. Just hit me up personally, and I'll send you on their way. People have been listening to this podcast a long time and still continue not to, to not believe me. And then they contact them, then they get on it, and they say it changed their life. I'm not here to fucking sell them. I'm just here to tell you about them. Hit me up. I'll give you all the information you need. Boom. Next, for the podcast, Beyond Clothing. Dude, the winter is fucking here. It's snowing in Salt Lake City. It's crazy. I shoveled like eight fucking inches of snow the other day. I have layered systems from Beyond Clothing, and I think you should too. You guys go check out Beyond Clothing. I'm not even kidding. Uh, it's a fucking awesome company. They have some incredible gear. Yes, it's up there on the scales of what it costs, but I tell you right now, it is worth it. Why would you pay less for something that's going to fall apart when you could pay more for something that is quality and you know it's going to last a long fucking time and, does, and do its job? Go check out beyondclothing.com. Go check out beyondclothing.com. Go check out beyondclothing.com. Use Rocco, R-O-C-C-O, for your discount. Don't forget GMR Gold. GMR Gold is a, is a, is a place to buy precious metals. Straight up. That's what they do. Uh, I get it sent to me every month with a with a thing called Bullion Box, owned by the same company. Uh, you just pay your, your simply monthly fee and you get an, an amount of equal or greater value to that price. All kinds of different stuff and coins, silvers, metals, uh, really cool shit. If you guys enjoy that kind of stuff, if you guys like doing that with the family, because that's kind of what I do with my sons and my daughters and just I kind of give them one here and there. And uh, they love it. They have a good time with it. So that's what we're going to continue to do. Go check out GMR Gold. Go check out Boy Box. Again, same thing. You guys can get a discount if you go use the promo code ROCCO, R-O-C-C-O. Willie Peach Chocolates. It's too late for you to order them to get them for Christmas, but maybe you can get them for New Year's because chocolate is always fucking awesome on New Year's Eve. Check them out, man. Willie Peach Chocolates. Again, I, I don't even know how many times I've explained this. This is a veteran who makes his chocolate out of his own fucking house. It's actually inspired me to try and make some chocolate in my house just for the hell of it. It's the holiday season, and I'm trying to do some fun shit for the kids. I wish I ordered some more Willie Peach chocolates so it got here on time, but you guys can get some for four New Year's. Go check them out, WillyPeachChocolates.com. Ranger Up. Ranger Up is just a buddy company of mine. Uh, my friends, uh, Nick Palmashano, you know, Tim Kennedy, they own it, uh, doing really good things. Uh, it's just a good company, and I'm just super proud of what they do. Uh, I wear their shirts, especially when I try and do the jiu-jitsu. The Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, I'm now currently coaching a, a wrestling team, so it's kind of fucking awesome. But go check them out. Ranger Up. Promo code Rocco. Same thing. AircraftMaintainer.com. This is one that I think a lot of you guys in the military should actually just look it up. Because uh, it's something that I'm not too familiar with because it's not the MOS that I did. But AircraftMaintainer.com uh, is a company that will help you get certified. You can get your FCC GROL which is your general radio operator's license. You can get that certification so that when you get out into the civilian world, you'll get paid with a fair rate. Go check it out. You could also get your airframe and power plant, your, your AMP certification. 
uh, you know, it's a three-week course in your local area. Uh, it preps you for the certifications for the MP licensing. It's all kinds of crazy shit. But here's the, here's the, the, the big kicker of the whole thing is that it's free. That if you're actively in the military before you get out, you need to get this done. It's free for you. They'll cover it. Fucking A. Why not do it? Ah, either way, let's get to the podcast. Yo. So recently I've uh, published another book. Uh, it's a co-authored book called Sugar Man. Um, and co-authored with Grant Jones, who is a New York Times bestselling writer in uh, the UK. Dude's a stud, man. The dude can freaking write, and he's just a cool cat. And, you know, I just want to partner with someone that I just think is just cool as fuck and, 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 and wanting to do, you know, the vision of what we want to do. You know, um, Sugar Man is kind of a concept based off of Border Patrol. Uh, I was a Border Patrol agent, obviously, from 2009 to about 2015-ish, in the mid-2015, mid I think late 2015, um, right after I resigned few of those you don't know, I resigned after the old manhunt in New York just because it was time to focus more on my family and I was well on my way of becoming a single dad again for multiple different reasons and uh, business was going good with, with some of the other ventures I took and, and I decided to try and make that jump. But while I was in the Border Patrol, you know, I was a part of a lot of cool things and just experienced a lot of interesting things and and during the time I was a border patrol agent, I was kind of going through a lot myself. You know, I was get, you know, I got out of the military in 2007. I was still dealing with post-traumatic stress in 2009. Still dealing with a lot of drinking, um, dealing with a lot of the VA stuff. I was going through divorce. I was not seeing my kids. Just a lot of things kind of piled up upon piling up. And, um, you know, working on the border alone while dealing with all this other stuff um, didn't make it easy. And, and most of my friends probably didn't know all the stuff I was going through. And a few of them did. And, you know, so at the same time, I've been wanting to be a writer since I was little. Having struggles with dyslexia, having struggles with just even reading alone and, and everything else really deterred me from that dream. But I've been journaling since uh, the, the military. is probably the first time I've actually sat down to journal. In college, I journaled my baseball career as in hitting. I, every at bat, I, I would... Um, go to my room and I would write about it, right? So what I did was, this is where I started writing really. I started writing in school, you know, trying to do all these papers, but I never really was good at it because I couldn't spell very well. And just, I knew what I wanted to say, but just didn't know how to put it on paper. But then as I started journaling for um, baseball, that kind of took into, started having several books of, of just baseball notes on hitting. And then from there, I went into the military and I started just making stories up, right? Like I had a couple cool dreams um, and taking methoquine and doxycycline, you know, you had these crazy ass fucking dreams in the military. And so that's kind of what started my path in trying to write and wanting to write and inspiring to write is really just tell the story. Um, and then so on and so forth, continue on. Um, I decided to start writing about all the stuff in the border patrol that I was going through, that I was dealing with, that I was experiencing. And not even that the stuff that I thought would have been fucking badass that I can do. Like, cross the border and find some shit, right? Just to fucking get myself into some shit. Because obviously leaving the military, I still missed the fight, right? I missed going into going into the mission. I missed prepping for for kicking in a door. I've missed prepping the team for all of it, like getting in the team room, suiting up before the mission, getting on the striker, getting a, a, a time sensitive target. All these things I just missed. And I was trying to make happen for myself on the border. There's several times I'm like, dude, fucking please, please run into someone with a fucking gun that tries to shoot me so I can smoke this motherfucker, right? It was just this weird thing that I was just still missing the fight. And so, so and so forth, let's fast forward till now to Sugar Man. I was writing notes and, and putting stuff together and and, and kind of created this script with a buddy of mine and, you know, and it hadn't gone anywhere. And then I talked to Grant Jones and I was, I was trying to get on the phone today, but Britain, you know, he's in Britain time on my time and times are all fucking crazy. But um, we started talking about working together on something. And I said, look, I have this concept of Sugar Man. And uh, just so out of respect for for, for my, my co-writer, Billy J, and the, and the script, you know, Sugar Man is a lot of my true life events that I've turned into a fiction script. Sugar Man is a similar concept, but completely different than the script. Because I wanted to keep uh, the Sugar Man script genuine to to what I was trying to do originally. And so me and... Me and Garan had to figure out how do we play the same concept but different storyline 
And so that we did. So we're able to come up with Sugar Man, and, and that's what we want with it. And you guys can go get it right now on Amazon. You can get it on Kindle. You can get it on print. Um, you know, and, and the reason why I'm doing this podcast is because several people see me self-publish have now messaged me and asking me how to self-publish. Um, yeah, man. So it's it's not the hardest thing ever, but look, I'm gonna put it on pause real quick, take off my sweater because it's getting hot in this motherfucker. Stand by. So, you know, the process of writing a book, I'm gonna give you my process. And I'm going to tell you why self-publishing for me is uh, the best option. And it might be for a lot of you. Look, unless you're someone with a huge name and a huge following, and, and I don't consider mine huge. I don't consider mine anything, right? It's just a, it's a following. But um, what the hell just happened to my notes? I just wrote all the notes out and they're all missing. So let me just reset this. But unless you have a huge following, unless you're like someone, like, like a well-known actor, actress, or, or public figure, you're probably not going to get a book deal. Now, when you get a book deal, what happens is they give you a large lump sum up front to write the book or to pay ghost writers to write the book or to pay your co-writers to help write the book for you. Whatever the case it goes, that's usually how it goes. Or unless you're a fucking badass writer and you write your own goddamn books. Um, majority of the books that are out there are probably written by a ghost writer or most likely written by a ghost writer. So, uh, you know, that's just the way the book world is. Not everyone has the time to sit down and write fucking word for word for word. It's fucking tough. Uh, and that takes a kind of a special kind of person on itself to, to, to have the discipline to even do that. So first things first, if you're not a fucking well-known big person and getting this lump sum of money to write your book, well, then you got to go do it your own self. Now, if you were just a small person, you wrote a book and trying to go get it published, it can cost you a lot of fucking money. Most of these publishing companies don't want nothing to do with you because you're not going to be able to make them money. There's no marketing behind it. There's no probability of getting people to buy that book. So there's no reason for them to risk the money in printing some fucking books for you, sending them to fucking Barnes and Nobles all over the world, and then getting no return. There's no return of investment in that. But luckily, Amazon has fucking taken care of all of us. Amazon's very smart in this aspect, and I think this is going to be, it's, it's going to suck for a lot of those publishing companies that are probably going to lose a lot of fucking money now because people with bigger names can now self-publish and make more money on the back end for themselves. Uh, so that's kind of the reason why I started doing it myself. It, it, you know, at first I didn't want to take the time. I felt like time to me is money, right? Like we all know that time is money. So the more money I spend on trying to figure out how to self-publish, I could potentially just write a motherfucking book, send it to a publisher. He can do it for me, but he takes a cut. So then, you know, I was talking to my buddy, my good buddy, Nicolatos, Nicolatos, Latsos, that's the uh, the Greek way of saying it. I might have fucked that up, not gonna lie. But, um, you know, that's one of my dudes. I talk to a lot about a lot of stuff, and, and he's been doing it very well and self-publishing all his books, and I didn't take his his uh, his words of advice in the first place, and I wish I did, because I would have had more money in my pocket. Um, so... <sighs> Self-publishing becomes your friend because now all you're doing is paying Amazon their cut and you get a more cut to you, directly to your bank, and, and you can actually evaluate and watch and make sure that you're not getting screwed over, if you are, if you aren't, whatever the case, from your other publishers, but it's something for you can check and maintain and, and, and monitor. Amazon also helps you promote your book. I haven't figured that out process yet, but I was actually going to sit down later today and put 100 bucks towards my book and see how that works. I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, but I do know how to do targeted ad building in fucking Facebook and Instagram different years and fucking fucking around with it and fucking it up plenty of times. And so that's what I plan to do once I get a few more books uh, up my sleeve. And I have a few in the works right now. But just saying this podcast explaining to you guys, if for some fucking reason in the back of your goddamn head, you said, hey, I think I want to write a book. Whatever the fuck the book's going to be, whether it's a kid's book, a fucking uh, uh, an erotica book, a fucking fiction novels, a freaking a story about your life or your buddy's life. It doesn't fucking matter. If you want to just put out a three page fucking pamphlet on how to give the fucking perfect fucking uppercut, you can do that on fucking Amazon. So I'm just trying to tell you guys, if you guys are always looking for some kind of, you know, if you have a dream to be a writer, go fucking write. It's not that fucking hard. If you have a dream to fucking, or if you're trying to fucking be this entrepreneur and find another way to make a couple extra dollars on the side, this might be your answer. I don't fucking know. But here's for the first thing I'm going to give you. So on my notes here, I wrote self-publishing with KDP. And that's called, I'm going to pull it up. But that is called, uh, I don't even know what the fuck it's called. Kindle fucking direct publishing, I believe that's what it is. Um, so I'm going to type it in here. KDP. And it's super easy because you're just going to log in like you would uh, fucking Amazon. You know, you create your sign in and whatnot and do your thing. 
Um, uh, boom. So now I'm signing to my KDP right now. I have light diffuse on here, right? And eventually I'm going to have light diffuse and I'll have my two kids books. And, and I set up a different KDP for sugar man because me and Grant are partnered in that. And so I want to make sure the funds go into a partnered account that we created for the business account. And then if we do five of them, the money stays separate from my other books. And so that's how I did. I created two different KDPs for this specific scenario. But you go onto Amazon, you do KDP, it'll pop up. It's Kendall Direct Publishing, okay? From here, you're going to you're gonna set up a book, right? It's really fucking easy. And so you can do a Kindle book or a paperback book and boom, you start filling it out. So that means you have a place to put your book. But how do you get a book together? Everyone has a different process of doing it. I do an outline format. So... Um, like, let's see, I'm trying to give too much. So I'm writing a book on leadership, right? And this book on leadership, the, what I did was I actually made kind of a outline of each chapter potentially that I want to put into this book, right? So let's just say in leadership, we're, one of the subjects is always going to be lead from the front or lead by example, right? So let's just say that's chapter one, lead by the front, lead, lead, lead from the front, lead by the example. So what I do is I put that as a title, as, as chapter one, lead from the front. And then what I do, I sit down and I write every fucking piece of information in my fucking head that pertains to that subject. I even write little stories like, oh man, here's an example. Uh, one time I was, I was pushing troops in Fort Sill, Oklahoma as a drill sergeant. And one of my soldiers told me this, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so then I did this, blah, blah, blah. So examples of leave from the front and do my thing. So I do that. I write as much as I possibly can in that sitting. Right. When I say sitting is like sometimes I'll, I'll sit down in the morning and just write. And then I'll sit down at night and write. And then I'll wake up in the morning and write. So different sittings. And so once I sit and write everything I possibly can in that moment for that one subject, chapter one, leave from the front. Um, I just, I leave it alone. You know, I let it breathe. Uh, I just, just, I don't even edit it, nothing. I just write as much fucking shit as I can that makes sense and it's pertinent to that chapter. And then I jump to the second chapter. So what's my second chapter? Um, fitness. Uh, is fitness anything in leadership? Who knows? But I'm saying if it is, boom, I put fitness. And then I write every example of fitness I possibly fucking could as much as I can. I have blogs I've written before. I have notes I've written for. I have poems I've written for. I kind of just put everything together and kind of see what fits. And then I go to the next one. And so I do this so on and so forth for about 10 to 15 chapters. Like that's just in my head. That's what I'm doing. For my leadership book, this is exactly how I'm writing my leadership book. And so... 15 fucking chapters of 15 different subjects and as much as I fucking could write. Some, some of those chapters might only have like one paragraph right now. At this moment, might have one paragraph. Like when I wrote Light the Fuse, there's a couple that just had like one paragraph and I'm like, all right, I don't know where that one's going to go, but we'll see. All right. And then after I'm done writing everything I possibly can, then I go back and I read it again. And when I read it, that usually gives me a little bit more like insight, like, oh, I can add from information here. Here's something else I thought of. Here's the extra I could put here. Actually, maybe to remove this because this doesn't make sense. But if I copy and paste this from here, send it down to fitness, it would make more sense there. Boom. So now I'm just moving things around. So now it's like kind of this organization phase where I'm just got this outline. I have tentative each chapter and I have a lot of the information that I already know off the top of my head in these. And then I can go deeper into those chapters. And that's how I write my books. Right. And from here, once I have a solid, solid, like I feel depending on how many pages you want your book, like none of my books, I want to be this fucking 300, 400 page book. I want them to be like easily digestible reads, something you can sit down and read pretty easily. 200 pages, 250, I think would be, it's starting to stretch for me. I like the, I like the 200 page mark in my opinion for like what I'm trying to do. Right. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to give, give, give my life experiences to people. And so I think 200 pages around there, you know, give or take, is a healthy fucking dose of information that they can swallow and they can chew up for a while and they can go back and fucking take notes, right? It's just kind of this really good sized book I like. Uh, when I write the book about my life, all right, that's going to be a thick ass motherfucker book. That's going to be a solid book. If you guys ever, uh, let me, I have a book right here on my desk. On my desk, it is the Echo and Ramadi. Like th this book right here, if you guys have never read this book, you're fucking wrong already. But Echo and Ramadi is a 300 and, 300, let's see. Come here, here you. 311 page book. That's all the way down to the index. You know, it's by Scott Housing. Housing. This is a retired uh, United States Mil uh, United States Marine Infantry Major. This dude is 
a fucking stud. And I'm using his book by example because I keep it here in my in my office. It's a fucking awesome book. But Echo Ramadi, if you feel that book, that is a book that has a lot of information. It is a solid book. It feels good. It makes it feel like in my hands, I love the feel of this. It's a hardcover, right? And it's just solid. So for me, when I write the book about my life, I'm assuming it's going to be around a 300 page book. When I'm when I'm writing a book with just about information to try and help you guys, I like the 200 page mark, but that's just me. I don't pay attention to that until I'm started to get into the edits. So now I have my outline of my chapters, my as much informational dump, almost like the draft of all my chapters. And then I go back a second time and look at them again. And I potentially sometimes go down a third time before I even send it to an editor. That third time, it's just like usually that's kind of putting on the final notes of the, the, the how much space, like how many words in each chapter kind of thing I, I, say, I say or I'm saying. And so once I get a good feel for like each chapter and the size of each chapter and I feel good about the information, I send it to an editor. Then you send it to an editor. Editors can cost all kinds of different money, right? Like to be honest, depending on the, the, the depth of the book and how much editing potentially, um, you can pay a lot more money. Some editors can do the whole thing, help you get it all for, 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 for you know, look at, I'm going to say I've paid from, I've, I don't even want to throw numbers out because I don't want to be disrespectful to any of the editors out there, but you know, I usually use Kendra, um, and, and she, she, she's awesome. And you know, she works with me and, and she understands where my deficiencies are. And so it works, but Kendra Williams is, is who I use most of the time, almost all the time, either way. But you know. Depending on the book, you know, she she does more work than others. If like, hey, man, you spelled everything wrong and this is completely fucked up and it's hard to organize. And we have to go back and forth multiple different times because I'm just I just delivered her a really shitty draft. Well, I'm probably going to pay a lot more because it's called it's hours on the clock, right? It's how many hours it takes her to edit. So keep that in mind when you do it. Um, don't be afraid to have, you know, other people edit before you send it to an actual editor. Some people don't even use editors. Some people use their mom, their dad, their sister, their brother. If you're doing direct to publishing kind of thing. Obviously, the goal is to save as much money as possible. And, um, you know, but the last thing you want is to turn in a product that has a lot of mistakes in there. And readers tend to find those mistakes. Like, I'm not the best writer in the world. So I can say, like, when you read my work, trust me, no one's sitting there fucking ooing and on over how quality of the writing is. It's just really, I'm just telling my story the way I want to tell it. But if you're going to put something out there, you want it to be done uh, right and well, I would find someone who does it for a living and pay an editor to do that. So once I get it back from editing and it's, and it's done from there, you got to take it to a formatter and I'm talking specifically for KDP purposes. If you're going to independently publish, right? Cause if you're going to go, if you're trying to sell your book to a publisher from there, as it's edited, you can, you can send it to, to publishing companies and see if they're interested in it. I've never done that. I don't know how to fucking do that. I just know that's how it's done. Um, you can have people put together a, a, what do they call it? Damn it. It's a book proposal and the book proposal is like a book agent. And so those agents help you kind of sell the concept. Um, that's a pretty interesting way to do it. And, and usually those, those book agents will get you the deal and you obviously give money on the back end for once they, they, they secure a deal for you. Again, none of this is for that sake. This is for those of you who want to self publish you go to a formatter. So someone who formats the book has to format it digitally, and then you also have to get it formatted for print. Some people can do both. When you do it for digitally, you're you're doing it for a Kindle, right? So Kindle and people who read on their on their their digital fucking tablets, that's what you're formatting digital for. And then the next one, you're formatting for print. They're two different things. Um, I fucked that up before. I was waiting for a digital one, realizing that I needed the print one, and and was a little late on my delivery time on the book. But that's something I'm learning. Uh, another thing you're going to need is cover art. Cover art is very important. You can go do the Kindle self one uh, that's cheaper. Uh, it looks very generic. You can identify it as very generic. If that's what you want, that's on you. If you don't have the money to spend on someone to, to do the cover art, again, I completely understand. Uh, the biggest expense right now from the book that I'm, I'm telling you to self-publish is your editor. And every editor is going to be different. Uh, your formatting, your formatting, digital formatting costs could cost from, I don't know, 75 bucks to 200 bucks. Just depends on who it is. Uh, a print can cost from $200 all the way up to five, $600, depending on who you use. And, you know, some of these people, so let me, let me break down why formatting. Formatting on a print side of things can really bring out the personality of your book. 
um, you know, someone who, if you look at, like I'm using the same book, Echo and Ramadi, I'm looking at that one and, you know, it has a really clean appearance. It's, it fits with the dialogue that's in the book. And then you do like a thriller. Some of those thriller ones have like this really cool artsy fucking titles like uh, chapter one, boom, 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 right? And so that all comes from uh, how you do, how, how, how a formatter does it. And so that's why you would choose the difference in, in, a, in a, how much it costs and, and all that shit. So there you go. Cover art. I've paid for a cover 150 bucks. I've seen people pay way more than that. Uh, and you can do it yourself. So it all depends. All these that I'm telling you right now, if you guys are looking for someone to do these for you for your own books, I can give you who I use. I won't say it on here besides obviously Kendra, but I won't say it on here because I also don't want them just getting flooded. But if you're a serious person that interested in writing a book and trying to do it, you know, KDP style, um, I can give you who I use. I have no issue with that. So just let me know. Cover art, man. Like I said, it is important to make sure you find someone who knows how to do cover art. There's a lot of graphic designers out there that can make dope shit. But certain things on the cover art are very important for KDP. This is my biggest issue. Understanding how to upload this digital fucking picture for your fucking book that is ready to print is the fucking biggest mess. It is the hardest thing for me to fucking figure out. I try to do it myself. It's impossible. I'd rather pay someone who does the cover art to actually create it for me so then I can upload the final fucking product. Trust me, this thing took me fucking weeks. I kept fucking it up. I finally asked for help. My buddy fucking did it for me. Pay the man. It is what it is. So now, all you have to do, you have the writing, you have the editor, you have the formatting for digital and print, and you have the cover art. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Right now, that is a total expense. So the total expense for, let's just say, Sugar Man was about $550, and that's on the, I was trying to be conservative with the work, right? And so the most I think I would ever pay to do a self-published book is in the 800 range, probably. Um, I'm comfortable in that 550 range. I think it's pretty, pretty cheap. And from there, like what, I don't know, you sell 300 books and you're making your money back in some, some aspect, right? A, a good majority of that. And so that, you know, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but you know, if you do it the old school way and just printing a bunch of fucking books, it can cost 10,000, 15,000, $20,000 to just to print a bunch of fucking books. Now we are done with the cover art. We have uploaded. It takes 72 hours for Amazon to approve the Kindle edition and the paperback edition. If you do Kindle edition, you can do pre-orders. Pre-orders help towards getting those sales up. So sales, the more the sales are up, then obviously they promote your book a little bit better. Um, you, you start getting opportunities of maybe getting on the Amazon best selling list. Is it that big of a deal? Um, it is to some people, you know, I, I personally, is, would it be exciting to be known as a New York Times bestseller? Yes. At the same time. Is it everything? No, I don't write the fucking books just to fucking be known. I just write the book because I enjoy putting content out there. Um, so it all depends on who you are and what you're trying to do, to be honest. So let's see. So we're done with the cover art. We've uploaded the books. It takes 72 hours for Kendall to approve it. If you have any issues, you can hit the help and, and, uh, it's crazy. They actually call you right, right when you need them to. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing how it's done. You can say help. They say, do you want to talk? Yes. What, what number? You give them your phone number. They fucking verify the phone number. Boom. You get a phone call right away for someone helping you um, with your issues. I called them and said, hey, my, my Kindle book is not connected with my print book. Can you blend them together? So when someone goes to search for Sugar Man, the series, it will pop up together. And I said, yes. So perfect. So now we have everything combined it looks good. It says Sugar Man, Sugar Man series, book one, Kindle edition. Also, you can go to paperback edition, which is prime. Uh, fucking awesome to have it on prime. It pumps me up that it's there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of it. <laughs> See, I still have issues right now. If you go to the, the informational box, it's all pr compressed together, which it shouldn't be. That's something I'm going to go and ask for help and try and get it fixed and blah, blah, blah. Continuing. So now it's on Kindle. It's going to be on Kindle. And people can get it on Amazon. They'll send you a link. You can go get your own link and, and send it on its way. What do you do from here? Well, shit. People forget that you can go do audiobook. So another cool thing for self-publishing that is fucking incredible that they've created. I'm going to plug it in right now. Let's get it open up a new page. Is ACX. Boom. ACX is 
I don't even know what ACX stands for. Fuck, what is it? Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Either way, put ACX.com. That's going to be where you upload your book for audiobook. So you're going to go here and sign in. And when you log in, you go and type your name. It's going to ask you, is that your book? And you say yes, if it's your book. Now that it's uploaded to Amazon and it's live, I can actually pull it pull it up here. I can cue the book, if you will. And then, boom, you bring it up. It says, I got Sugar Man and I got friggin' Light the Fuse, which I'm going to have to edit that either way. But So Light the Fuse is here, right? And so what I did was put Light the Fuse in. I put all the fucking information that they needed. Everything is looking good. And once I've done that, I can request for auditions. Why? Because I don't have the time to do an audiobook for myself. Um... And so, I have to have someone do it. The cool thing is you can audition for it. So, you can find people to, to read it the way you expect. If you want a guy to sing with a British accent, if you got want someone to be um, a female, if you want to be excited, whatever the hell you want, you can actually search for the certain categories for someone to audio your book for you. And they also do auditions. So, you'll have, I, you, you can sign it up and within three days, you'll have five auditions for your book. You give them a little script that you want to hear. They, they read it. If you like it, awesome. You can offer them the job. And when you're offering someone the job, it's pretty important to understand how that works. I'm not the best at it. I'm not going to lie to you. But um, you can offer to pay them for their production costs and on top, you can pay them up front what you would negotiate a rate. Say, look, I'm going to pay you $500 to do this book. If they say yes and no residuals, that's on them. You could do royalty share is what I do. A royalty share deal is that as many as those as I sell, there's a royalty share. And so they will get a portion of the book. So if the book is selling for $7.99, they get a portion of that. But you know what? For me, time is money. So it makes sense to have someone else audiobook my book because it's been close to the holiday seasons. And I'm just trying to get it out there. Holy smokes. So there you have it. This is pretty much everything. I don't even know if it's still recording because it all jumped off my page. But if you guys are interested in, you know, self-publishing to me, I think it's fucking awesome, man. And like the benefits of it, like I said, you get to control your own destiny. You can write as many fucking books as you want. You could put them out there for 99 cents. You could put them out there for $20. It doesn't matter. You can upload them to your Facebook and to your Instagram. You can build targeted ads with them. You can also market them on Amazon themselves. KDP direct printing to me is going to change the face of the books all over the world. You know, what they did to Toys R Us and hurt their business, they're going to hurt Barnes & Noble, which sucks. I love going into a bookstore. But the reality is if you're an author and, and you want to try and make money off your books, the best answer for you, especially if you're not a well-known individual that has a huge social media following, is to self-publish your books. And I know what you guys say, it's hard. It is and it isn't. You know, like I have, you know, I have a sister. I want her to write a book so bad. And, you know, it's hard for her to find the time. And if you guys are aspiring writers or just tell yourself you have a book you want to write or tell yourself there's a story you want to do, do yourself a favor and give yourself some time during the day. I usually wake up before work. I usually wake up before the kids wake up and I start writing and I stay up late writing. It's just something me and my wife agreed on. She knows this is a passion of mine to write. I have uh, like tons of fucking poems in my phone right now. So I think I'm going to actually publish a poem book because I just have them on my phone just sitting there. Um, and then I'm working on that leadership book. Uh, my next goal is to write some kids books for my kids as they're growing up. I can hopefully give them something to grow up with. And it's just something that's like I enjoy doing. So why can't I keep fucking doing it? And I'm sure there's a ton of you out there that feel the same. You know how easy it is to write a kid's book? The hardest part of a kid's book is getting someone to do the, the artwork for you. And I have a guy for that as well. So if you guys ever thought about publishing your own kid's book, it'll cost you probably around, I think a kid's book because of the drawings will cost probably around a thousand dollars total. You could probably get away with 500 bucks to hire someone to do all the graphics and, and then the rest you do on your own. But I promise you, imagine writing your kid a book from dad. Here you go. Yeah, I wrote this son. This is kind of about this. You know, there's a veteran out there who wrote a book about PTC that inspired me. I was like, man, I should have thought of that. I love that idea. And I want to do something very similar, but I don't want to copy his idea because I respect the man's freaking, uh, you know, his, his vision. But there's things like that I want to do. I recommend you guys go do the same. You can write a book for your family. You can write a book for yourself. You can write a book for your loved ones. Whatever the case, you just write a story that you think is fucking awesome. 
Put it out there into the world. Let us read it. I'm interested. And if you guys do, if you guys get inspired and motivated by this podcast and you guys do your own book, you motherfucker better send me one. Hey, I'm about to head out here. I'm about to be done here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope someone learned something today. I love you guys. Thank you very much. The podcast is growing. Obviously, the new intro, I love it. It's cool. It's fresh. It's new. Um, I would love it if you guys would just, you know, put a little... Put a little rating on my fucking podcast. Tell your friends about it. Let it let it be known. The Vinnie Rock Podcast is out there. Have a good day. I took the blow.